Last week, Nissan using Tesla's NACs or the North American charging standard for their upcoming EVs. I thought that put to rest the battle of the charging standards in the future, but not so fast. Check this out. Coming from the Honda newsroom, seven automakers uniting to create a leading high powered charging network across North America. Let's go. All right, this is a big team up. You know, there are a lot of hurdles for battery electric vehicles, cost, convenience, accessibility to charging at home and out on the road. And this could help really alleviate that uh, range anxiety, that charging anxiety out there because BMW, General Motors, Honda, Hyundai and Kia, therefore Genesis, and therefore Acura as well, and therefore Cadillac and GMC and, and many as well, since BMW is many and Mercedes-Benz, they own anyone else here in America? Well, maybe they're electric vans. And then Stellantis. I mean, I just reviewed the, uh, an Alfa Romeo, Stelvio, check out that review. But of course, all of Chrysler and Dodge. I have to go to the Stellantis brand because there's so many. All right, Fiat's in there. Alfa, Chrysler, Citroen, Dodge, DS. Love to have some DSs in America. Anyway, Fiat, Jeep, Lancia, Maserati, Opel, Peugeot, Ram trucks, Vauxhall, and those other two doesn't matter here in America. Anyways, massive, massive car companies here create an unprecedented new charging network joint venture. Joint venture. This means they are building their own company together to build this network. And this will significantly expand access to high powered charging in North America. So how many? They are targeting 30,000 high powered charge points in urban and highway locations to ensure customers can charge whenever and wherever. So 30,000 minimum freeways, highways, interstates, you name it. To put that in perspective, the Tesla supercharging network in America has about 17,000 supercharging stations. So this is about double of what Tesla currently has here in North America. So they're focusing on reliability. That is a big thing outside of the Tesla supercharging network, which is pretty reliable from my understanding, just can get busy is that ChargePoint and Electrify America, as well as the others out there, having a consistent up and running chargers has been very, very difficult and has been a, a big obstruction in, in EV adoption. So they are gonna be focusing on reliability, keeping their chargers up and running at every station. So that is great to hear. High power charging capability, I don't think they say anything about uh, the sort of kilowatts I'll be pushing, but hopefully over 300. That would be pretty epic. Tesla, I think, is at 250. Um, digital integration. So what does that mean? Well, I can think of a couple things. If we go to the Tesla supercharging page here, so it would be as simple as putting in a destination in your nav. Let's say if, uh, Android Auto built in, or should I say Google built in, and it'll tell you, hey, you need to charge here. We'll precondition the battery so you can charge faster, et cetera, uh, for your, your trip. So that's one way of digital integration. Another way would be Hey, you just pull into your charger and you plug it in and it automatically bills you. You don't have to worry about fiddling with an app or getting out your credit cards, etc. It's automatic with just plugging it into your car. So they also want to have various amenities while charging. So that's either putting it next to restaurants or maybe having, I don't know, vending machines. Let your imagination run wild there. They want to focus on using renewable energy too. All right. Charging stations will be accessible to all EV customers, not just the ones in this D7. So that means Tesla or Toyota. And I wouldn't be surprised if they would be wanting someone like Toyota uh, or Ford or something like that to join this joint venture. That would be incredible. They will be offering both standards of charging. CCS, which everyone but Tesla uses right now. I mean, unless you're in Europe, that's CCS2, or unless you're a plug-in hybrid like a Mitsubishi Outlander, which uses the Chatamo still on the top trim, which anyways, that's dead and over with, at least here in America. But we have CCS, which is just about everyone other than Tesla, and the NAX. So all Teslas and, man, GM already came out recently, Ford, Nissan, et cetera, et cetera, saying they're all going to be using NAX in 2024 and later. And first stations are scheduled to open in summer of 2024. So pretty, pretty soon here, actually. So you can imagine this has been in the works for a while. So it's pretty bold for them, but they are saying this joint venture 
aims to become the leading network of reliable, high-powered charging stations in North America, not one of the best or second best at Tesla. No, they are aiming to have better charging experiences than Tesla. And with all these companies combining, there's no reason why they can't. It'll also be coming to Canada at a later stage. So USA summer of 2024. So just a year from now, each site will be equipped with multiple high power DC chargers, making long distance journeys easier for customers. All right. The stations want to offer canopies where, wherever possible and amenities such as restrooms, food service, retail operations, either nearby or within the same complex. A select number of flagship stations will be equipped with additional amenities, delivering a premium experience designed to showcase the future of charging. Can't wait to hear more about that. And Canopies is a huge deal here in the South, here in South Florida. I'm sure it is in Cal, well, certain parts of California, the desert, as well as in Southwestern the United States or Texas. So I mentioned some of the technology integration earlier, but you'll also be able to reserve your spot. So if you're on a trip, you can say, hey, I'm pulling into this parking spot in 20 minutes. I need this spot and it should be only connect to your car in theory. Now there are comments from joint venture founding partners and you guys, I'll put this in the description if you want to listen through all the corporate mumbo jumbo. So while this is 99.9% .9 great news and worth getting excited for because we'll have an alternative and potentially a superior option compared to the Tesla supercharging network system, there are some reasons to be concerned because just because electric vehicles are more efficient with energy doesn't mean they're always Always cheaper to own. Uh, this is a fun article. I just feel like throwing this in there for you guys because electric vehicles aren't the only solution now or in the future, in my opinion. But new Tesla owner finds this is in the in July of 2022, and, and it's also going to depend on gas prices in your area as well as energy prices. But new Tesla owner finds that supercharging his Model 3 is more expensive than pumping gas. And it was even shown on his own app here that the cost of electricity in his area was so expensive that it's actually more expensive to fuel up at a supercharger station uh, than if you were buying gasoline. Now, it doesn't say what the fuel cost would be or miles per gallon you'd be getting, but it doesn't look good because on the supercharging network, it says cheaper than gas. So that's not always the case. It should have an asterisk here, but you know how Tesla is. So this guy was filling up at supercharging stations that cost 58 cents per kilowatt hour. And a year and a half ago, it was less than half of that at just a quarter. Now, at a quarter, it'd still be pretty close to gasoline, depending on how much or how many miles per gallon you're getting. If you're getting over 40 miles per gallon, it's probably a lot more expensive because I did a cost comparison not that long ago because Tesla was claiming, hey, the Tesla Model 3 right now is cheaper to own over the lifetime than a Corolla. And I'm like, I call bull crap on that. I ran the numbers and it just doesn't make sense. Even in California with high energy costs, a Corolla hybrid is less than $24,000, gets 47 miles per gallon, even with about $5 gas and 30 cents per kilowatt hour. That's if you're charging at home. If you're charging out on a Tesla supercharger network, it could be almost double that, right? There's still about a 10 grand Delta between a Corolla hybrid and a Tesla model three. And that's driving 15,000 miles a year. If you're driving less than that, then the Corolla will keep pulling out ahead. But on the Honda and Acuron, they will reveal uh, the new ZDX by the end of the year. So that's pretty exciting to have this news. Pretty much Honda and Acura with their new big EV releases, they are armed with an arsenal of things to look forward to. And this is one of those big ones, erasing that range anxiety, at least in the coming years. Right now, it's still, I mean, it's not out there yet. There is no charging network other than the supercharging network. So buying a, an EV right now and having that peace of mind, there aren't a whole lot of options out there other than Tesla, in my opinion. But that's going to be rapidly changing in the next couple of years with having seven of the world's largest automakers working together to build the best charging network in North America. It's pretty exciting stuff. I'm going to end it there. What are you guys excited? Are you excited about it? Or do you want an electric car? Do you want an do you not want an electric car? Are you much more likely to buy an electric vehicle now, or are you still just going to wait to see and have this sort of infrastructure in place before getting too serious? I'll see you guys in the comments. Have a great day. We'll catch you in the next one in peace.